fine with Why, me. did somebody say something? <laughs> Hi all. Well, here we are again with Part Zone's latest release, the RAF SE-5A World War One era biplane. Now, this is a new venture for Park Zone. They've never released one before. This is their first, and it's looking like it's going to be a real nice one. So, let's get the foam out of the box and see what's in it, eh? Okay, foam's out of the box, and as you can see, it's packed in really neat. Everything looks really good, so I'll just get this all out of the box and we'll see exactly what parts we've got. Okay, we've got the parts out of the box and here they all are. Here's what you get. The uh, charger, it comes with the cigarette lighter adapter. You get the Park Zone battery, there's an axle for the wheels. The detail in this foam is really good. It is nice and smooth. It's got bracing in it, plastic right across, so you don't have to brace that yourself, it's already done. Looks good. You get the usual bag of goodies. Ah, and that gun. Just like everyone was uh, saying, it looked in the picture, it's missing the uh, barrel for the top. Another bag with your struts in it for the wheels. Here. It comes fitted with the wheel on it. I did notice in one of the bags here there is the tail skid if you want to uh, put the tail skid on. That comes all in one piece ready to just go on by the looks of it. Should be nice and easy. Top wing. Now this plane was uh, modelled by Park Zone on James McCudden. He was an ace from World War One. I. I think he had something like 56 kills. And uh, one of them guys that lived to tell the story. And uh, that's why the roundels are put in close here, because on his personal plane, he didn't have them out on the ends out here. So that's why they're in there, because if you go to Wikipedia and look him up, you'll see all about it. Now, the first thing I notice when I pick these wings up is they've got heaps of detailing, but they're a lot thinner than what we're used to. I suppose that's because we've got two of them. They're a lot thinner, that's all I can say. I don't, I don't know how they're going to handle a crash. I expect when they're all rigged up, that'll add a bit of strength and rigidity to it, so they'll be fine. Now, let's have a look at the bottom wing. Now, the bottom wing is all set up ready to put your aileron rod up to the top. It's got plastic covers where the struts go. Underneath is very nice as well. Very neat, very neatly done, all in, covered in plastic over your servo. Same up this end. Smooth, it's very, very nice, very nice indeed. Time to have a look at the fuse. Well, there you go. What do you reckon? That propeller looks good, doesn't it? Nice to see that they've actually changed the shape of it and colour, got it more authentic. The radiator looks good. The detail is amazing. Look at all the stitching and ribbon. You can see it all in there, it's got the exhaust. There's that gun that you couldn't see in the shots, that, the promo shots they'd put up. Look at that, looks very nice. Step. Pilot. Now, I don't care what anybody says, that looks like Matt Andron to me. <laughs> I 
I reckon he had a bit to do with building this plane, I wouldn't be surprised. The detail is really nice, look at that. Coming down there, very nice. Usual air holes to let the air out. Right, inside, the guts of it. There you go. It's got an AR600 in it. Very nice indeed. And of course, the manual on the bottom of the box. Now, a little word on this. We're actually going to need the manual this time. Because unlike most park zone planes, this one is going to take just a fraction more to build because we've got to fit the struts in the wings and the hour on rods. So, first thing to do, of course, is get your battery on charge because you're going to be wanting to fly once you get this thing built, weather permitting. So, I'll get the battery on charge so it's charging and uh, we'll. Uh, Start the build, shall we, and get this thing built. Okay, I'll be back in a tick. First up, we want to locate the bottom wing. Now in the manual, it says to get your Auron wires out and connect them up. It doesn't matter to uh, what side goes to what, they fit both ways. So we'll connect them in. Make sure you get the wires right, the brown to brown, orange to orange. There they are, double check, they're the right way around. Locate that into the middle, put our pins in the front, and that should all just go in there like that. Okay, now two screws into there, so I'll just do that. I'll do them up firm, but don't over tighten them. Okay, that's the first part. Now let's get to the next. Next up we're going to fit the wheel cover on, the uh, axle cover and the wheel. Now you'll be using these parts to fit this part on and what we basically do is you'll put it on and I'll go and screw it on. There's how it screws on there. You can see it's screwed on the inside there. Put the axle on on that. Okay, I'll go and do that. Once you've got them screwed on, there's a couple of little spaces you put on, you put two of them on, just follow the manual, then the wheel. Now these wheels look really nice, the rubber on them, the foam is, uh, makes it look like a real tyre, they're quite good. Anyway, just slip that on, you've got your collar, slip that on, tighten it up. And there's our axle assembly done, the landing gear done. Next in the manual is actually fitting the gear. We're going to fit them with uh, these plastic covers that go over. So let's get this gear in. It just slots in at the front there, sits down nicely. And uh, these arms here just slot straight in there. And then we've got covers to go over them. So there's a cover there. Cover there. Okay, and then there's a double cover that goes up the front here. Looks like it fits around that way, slots in there nicely. Okay, I'll just screw them in. Okay, there's the landing gear finished now. I'll just turn that over. There. As you can see, the landing gear and the bottom wing are now installed. So, on to the next part. Next is the top wing. We'll put the cabanes on first, and it says here that the ones that are marked, they're marked, uh, if I can get them looking, you know, it's D and B. B goes to the front. So the front ones have B on them. They slide in quite easily. The back ones are D. I'm only going the one way, so make sure you get them on the right side. There we go. Okay, then you screw them in with some screws. 